Buckle up for another episode of Ghost Phasers, a supernatural rewatch podcast. My name is Richard, and sitting shotgun as always is my brother in podcasting, Reed. Hey, say hi to the camera. Wait, are we filming this episode? Oh, yeah, no, no, sorry, not that camera, the one over there. Did you put a camera in the house? Well, not that one, actually, the one over there. I'm sorry, when did you set up a bunch of cameras in my house? Oh, I can do it anytime I want. I'm cameraman. Are you... Brian? Fuck, oh, shit, no, I deserve this. Let's get into this. Ghost! Ghost Facers! We're busy ghosts! We're others, we're not! We're ghosts! Ghost Facers! Stay in the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're busy nightmare! We're busy dread! Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're busy faceless! We're busy dead! Welcome to Ghost Facers. Today we're discussing season eight, episode number four. Once bitten, twice shy. No, it's just called bitten, right? Yeah, it's just called yeah okay. Bitten. I was like, there's no way it's called no, once bitten, no. Twice shy. I, I just, it's it's a last werewolf you ripped out my, my heart. heart. Holy shit! The and very the next, next day, day, I finished your film. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Hell yeah. We're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Proof presented by our five-star review. Woo. Uh, from Becketh314 via Apple Podcast USA. Okay. With the subject fantastic, they go on to say. Whoa, like cash for life? Fantastic. Oh my God. Wow. I haven't thought about that in years. I love this podcast. It's my favorite one I've ever listened to. You're goddamn right. That's right. Don't forget it. I'm the one who knocks. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one who reviews. Yeah, I'm the one who pods. <laughs> I started watching Supernatural over a year ago to cope with a breakup. Fucking been there. Specifically? It, have you been there? Yeah. You started watching Supernatural? I did not like for the first a, time, but a oh, time. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. And I binged the whole show in two months. You've been there. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I fell in love with all of it. Finding Ghost Facers gave me content to keep up the Supernatural hype after finishing the show. Y'all are crazy, <laughs> but keep me laughing every time I listen. Keep it up. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's very sweet. So much, Becketh. <laughs> Beck. Is it not like Beckett H? Like it's a, I mean, like a name and an initial. You w- think it's Becketh? Well, it's it's all lowercase. So uh, who's to say? True. So I'm saying, and that's why you always use cases. <laughs> that's why you leave a note. That's why you leave a note. This episode aired October 24th. Ooh, spooky's coming. Not enough. Seven days after, like next week, will be the. Yeah, seven days, like, oh, yeah. the next episode yeah, yeah. will be exactly seven days. It'll be October 31st. Yeah, but this so is... So next week's will be the, ooh, spook. Like, yeah, this but it's is... close. It's getting close. It's in the spooky month. It's almost spooky time. It is almost spooky time. This uh, episode... I gotta pick a fucking monster. Anyway, <laughs> we'll deal with that after. <laughs> is that what you say when you go to the the the... The, like, strip club? I need to pick a monster. (laughs) No, that's what they say to me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, yeah. Written by Robbie Thompson. Oh, yeah. Give me your episode. Make it real. Or just forget about it. Yeah. Directed by Thomas J. Wright. Okay. Viewed by an estimated. Wait, was this? This isn't a... What? This isn't a Ross Lemming joint. <laughs> yeah, you know when they do the drop at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eugenie Ross Lemming. Uh, I'll double check right now. Yeah, no, definitely not. That was the episode previous. Oh man, I hope you watched the right episode. I definitely watched the right episode, but that was last week's. Oh, could have sworn that. Okay, maybe I'm just having really vivid credit streams. Man, you need to get hobbies? I don't even know. No. That's not good. No, that's bad for content. Okay. Viewed by an estimated. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> 1.9. Close. 
one point eight, one point eight six. Hey, all right, all right. We're all right. still we're still in the high respectable. Ones. It's yeah. res- that's respectable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect. Hey, disrespectable. You know. Oh my God, <laughs> Lil Richie. Hey, that's respectable. <laughs> yeah, we want to see a little uh, promo movie. Lil Richie. I don't know what these characters are. Anymore. I don't know. It's better than the one I had last week. What was the one from last week? <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, the other one from last week. Oh yeah. The other one from Dude, last week was. <laughs> hey, uh, damn! I just want to get a look at you. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. The Duke Nukem of Star is born. All right. God, we see. really are Canada's best podcast. Goddamn right. Not even the funniest. Nope. Just the best. best. We are best podcast. Yep. Let's look at the promo. All right. Hit me. Yeah, it's really that was great. boring. Oh, that was good. Oh, that sucked. Oh, I, I thought it was good. I realized halfway through I wasn't watching it. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we were sitting in the same room watching one screen, and I realized halfway through I wasn't looking at it. Yeah, but you were getting a look at me. Yeah, well, still though. <laughs> yeah. Um I have some more bad news. What do you mean bad news? No international titles this week either. I mean <laughs> I, I'm calling it TOD now. No, next week it though it'll be there. I've looked. It will be there. But we make up for it with featured music. All right. Featured music this week. It's just that one song, like, four times. It's not. It's so much more. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, man. What's the Matter by Milo Green. Okay. These Days by Fairchild. Okay. Waiting on Nikki by The Muddy Reds. Get Alone by The Broken Remotes. Bathtub by The Muddy Reds. I Lie by The Leaning Eaves. Turned Tables by Should. It Took a Long Time by Kyo- uh, Coco Taylor. And Barricades by The uh, Outdoors. Jesus. Why this episode? Because they're teens, I guess, and so they're just listening to music all the time? Uh, I guess. Like, that's part of the ambiance yeah. of all of the found footage things. Yeah, that would yeah, be my yeah. guess. Uh, well, shit. TV Guide describes this episode as, Sam and Dean investigate a bizarre murder in a college town. Their probe leads them to an apartment where they find two dead bodies and a computer with some disturbing footage and indicates the deaths may be the result of an unusual animal attack. Yeah. Yeah, they find like a computer that has some disturb- disturbingly final edit footage of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was some. Yeah, like, there certainly was some final. Play cuts. me underscore final brackets final yeah. <laughs> underscore version three underscore final <laughs> underscore fuck this client. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you tell we've worked in this industry? Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, there was certainly a final cut. Oh. <gasps> But before we talk about that, why don't we open up Dad Journal and learn about some of the real world lore? Let's see. I'm so curious what this one's going to be. Let's see. <laughs> what Werewolves the, 2. Let's, let's see it. what the lore says about Werewolves 2. Again. Yeah, again. More. <laughs> let's see what the we- lore says about more werewolves. Yeah. <laughs> we got some werewolves. We talked about some werewolf. But not more. This is more werewolves. Yeah, the uh, it, it, double the werewolves, double the fun. I didn't say double. I just said more. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't want to get like. Yeah, let's not set. St- st- I don't want to get pinned to things. Not st- uh, sign checks where our body can't. Yeah, cash. exactly. It'll definitely be more, but by how much? Who's to say? Hey, an inch is more. I mean, for me, yeah, it's double. <laughs> 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 All right, what it, uh, what more can we learn from Dad's journal about werewolves? Okay, so we t- when we t- were talking about werewolves, we talked about how there's like a bunch of different traditions of like shape shifting animal kind of magic. We talked about uh, how there were like werewolf trials and shit, and the way that there were witch trials. But this time, I wanted to f- sort of shift focus a Sorry, little. Sorry, witch bit. trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those ones. Oh, which ones? Those ones. Oh. Lock her up. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you, yeah, what do you mean those trials? <laughs> um I wanted to shift focus a little bit to some of like there's a a condition called um porphyria that's like a real condition. It's about like your um your body not processing like uh things uh, properly. And it, some of the symptoms of it 
they think are maybe like what contributed to some folklore of both vampires and werewolves. So in some cases in Porphyria, um, the symptoms include like, um, you know, like, uh, like pain and, uh, discoloration of skin or, um, not like an, not an allergy, but like an aversion to sunlight or a sensitivity to sunlight, all these kind of things. Sometimes it's about like, uh, like stuff with your teeth and shit. So like, they think all of these things might have been like people had like a porphyria thing and they contributed to what eventually became the lore of these other things. Like vampirism and vampirism and, and and lycanthropy and all yeah, this yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. I I bring that up because those are some of the things we maybe like attribute now. Like, you know, someone you see, see someone hunched over or avoiding the sunlight or things like that. Um but the idea of werewolves, especially across cultures, doesn't have like one set thing. And I l- looked up like the very the various ways that they said you could become a werewolf. Okay, and there's so many. Of course, um, you know our conception is basically what the show does. You get bit, right? Um, it's even more simple than a vampire because in va- in vampire stuff, it's like you, you got to drink their blood. Like, sure. there's all sorts of different ones for vampires, but for werewolves. It, we usually just think you get bit by a werewolf, you turn into a werewolf, if you manage not to die. Um, but some of the various methods for becoming a werewolf include um, removing clothing and putting on a belt made of wolf skin. That's one. Uh, um, That's it. There you go. Sometimes, or the idea of maybe like donning an entire like wolf skin or something like that, and but that it would imbue you with that kind of like essence or something <laughs> like that. Is that why, I wonder, maybe some cultures, that's why, like, in battle, they would wear, like, the skins of animals? Oh, I mean, I think it's all connected to, like, those kind of things, right? Sure. Like, the that idea of, of like, embodying a thing or having, like, a, a sort of symbol or stuff like that, right? Uh, there's another one where it was, um, you rub your body with a magic salve. So it's not even, like, anything necessarily specific. It's just, like, this will turn you into a wolf. Um, drinking rainwater out of the footprint of the animal in, in, <coughs> wow, in question. That is... So that's not contained just to werewolves. That would be for all kinds of like animal shape shifting. Um, but that's one I wouldn't. I'm by the way, I'm not endorsing these. Don't try them. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the usual episodes. Yeah. <coughs> so, in the 16th century, a Swedish writer named uh, Olaus Magnus says that. Um, Livonian werewolves were initiated by draining a cup of specially prepared beer and repeating a set formula. (laughs) So more like a ritual. Sure. No, I'm not doing a formula. Yeah. Where's my special prepared beer? I'm going to be a werewolf now. Yeah, I'm going to do Dude, don't be a werewolf. Don't call her. Don't call the moon, man. No, I'm, she doesn't want to hear from you. No, I have a few things to say to her. I'm just, I'm gonna call the moon. She's gonna listen to what I have to say. Yeah, she comes and goes. She pleases every month. Yeah. <laughs> I I miss you. <laughs> I yeah. I like a werewolf that like listens to the script. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, anointing with a certain um, ointment, uh, which they make by instinct of the devil, is another one. Okay. Um, there's uh, an idea of like pheromones, all sorts of things, um, and so some of those are like, those are largely like for the most part intentional things. Mm-hmm. Some people thought that you became a werewolf because it was a divine punishment. So if we go all the way back to like the origin of the term lycanthrope which is there's a myth of this uh, Greek king, Lysaeus, I think. Lysaeus, Lysaeus. Yeah. Lysaeus. Come 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 King Lysaeus. Lysaeus. (laughs) Um, He offends Zeus. He, uh, I can't remember, he like feeds him something shitty or I I can't remember the exact thing. And Zeus is like, get fucked and turns him into a wolf. And so like say that becomes the root of the word like lycanthropy and lycanthrope and stuff. Oh, sure, like okay. That. <laughs> so that was like a divine punishment or uh or or stuff like that. So uh there were those who were excommunicated by the Roman Catholic Church who were said to have become werewolves. So it's clearly like a 
myth propagated by the church, but sure. that idea of like once you're outside of God's light, you know. Oh yeah. The idea of turning into a monster is not that insane. Sure. Um and uh yeah, the power of uh turning into wild beasts uh was also sometimes attributed to sorcerers, but it was also sometimes attributed to saints in a slightly <laughs> confusing Okay. In a the sort of hypocrisy you'd never expect from the church. No, not my church. Um yeah, so they said uh, uh St. Patrick was said to have transformed the well he was said to have transformed the Welsh king of Hereticus into a wolf. St. Patrick, he was on that special formula. <laughs> Oh, God. I'm going to make you into a wall. <laughs> That's in poor taste. Why? I'm, I apologize to our Irish listeners. I, I can't believe the poor taste joke that Richard just made. I respect you. Not like those dirty, no good Italians. That listen. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Okay, wolves. Uh, but uh, So... That was some new werewolf facts, but then I also found this thing called the werewolf diet, and since this episode is so much about that, I was like, oh, what's a werewolf diet? Eat hearts? It was No, this is like a fad diet Oh, called the werewolf diet. Okay. That was more or less, it's very similar to like when people like say they're doing like a detox cleanse oh, or something. Okay. No, it actually is very, not what you would think. It's not okay. like paleo. It's the idea that like you start fasting but then you like you fast even harder when the moon is full. Oh, and it was the it's idea. Wolf, it's a moon thing. Well, this is the thing because the whole premise behind it was like the moon affects the tides. The Earth is seventy percent water. We're seventy percent water. Someone was really so if you high. Time this with the moon, you'll lose more weight. Which like, someone was just really doesn't high. make any no, fucking sense. No. But I found all these articles of like, please don't do the werewolf diet. It's really bad for you. Like, oh don't do the werewolf God. diet. Don't do it. Because there were other ones that were like, not only should you like fast, but like drink more water when the moon is out. Oh my god! But they were like, most of these diets where you fast and you lose a bunch of weight really quickly, you're actually losing the water weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then so, by uh, drinking a bunch of water. So then it's like, so now you're drinking a bunch of water, not eating. Then so you should like, eat a bunch of salt after. It's a, like, it's a really like weird fucked up shit. Yeah. Weird. And somehow none of it came back to paleo or like raw meat or organ meat. No. Nope. So like I thought it would be yeah. something. Something cool. Nope. 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 That's it. That's more werewolves. Well, let's get into today's episode. But we no, will. I think we're good. All right. Well, we'll get into today's episode. <laughs> After this quick break. <gasps> and we're back. Hey, thank you for rescuing us from the liminal space where we're not talking. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't like it. No, and you'll never talk about what happened. No, I, I won't. Well, we begin usually by going into the then. Okay. But not this week. There oh, was no then. That's true. Only now. <sighs> we're There's like only now. There is no then. I'm like on the werewolf diet. I'm like living in the now, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. By the I wait for the moon and I chug as much fucking water as I can. <laughs> I'm living in the now, That's baby. That's right, baby. Uh, so this episode begins by Sam and Dean bursting into a house near a college and searching the place. Sam finds a corpse covered with a sheet, a corpse with no ID, and walls covered in blood. Yeah. <laughs> I came in too hot. You know when you do that, I think that you're going to say something, and then you don't. No, sorry. The brothers find a laptop with a note saying, play me. The Winchesters play it, and a video starts it's, up. Ugh, it's so fucking contrived. Anyway, just fine. Uh, okay. Uh, Sam and Dean Winchester. <laughs> this should be like a jigsaw thing. They this... come into a room and there's a thing that says play. It should be fucking Jigsaw. You know, it's it's about cinema. <laughs> Film. <laughs> Joke from a different podcast? Yep. Joke uh, from the Patreon of a different podcast? Yep. Uh, the, my problem with this is I hate the wording of, of the first line that comes up. Okay, remind me what it is. It's this should never have ended this way. Oh, God. Which bothers me so much. This should have never have this ended should this have, way. This should never have ended this way. 
Which it's, it's that's not like grammatically like I wish that it just said this shouldn't have ended this way or this shouldn't have happened or, or it shouldn't have ended this way. Here's what I'll say. I agree that I think it's a clunky sentence, but these people are so bad at filmmaking that I actually think it tracks. Okay. Like really, let's look at the product we're looking at in this episode. It's like, yeah, they would that's a shitty piece of di- like yeah, that's sure. shit. A student giving a lot of credit. A student, Brian Wilcox, is filming footage at a diner. Right. Now we're actually watching the film that was on the computer. Yes. Brian is at the diner with his friend and roommate, Mike Wheeler, debating what Brian should make a movie about. As Mike goofs off with his friend's camera, they spot several girls at a booth nearby, and Mike good-naturedly suggests that they might take pity on Brian. Yeah, and Brian's like, what if I just zoom in on one? Hell yeah. Well, he he zooms on all of them. I know, but... He does focus on one, but... Ugh. One of the girls, Kate, comes over and asks if they're filming her. She she discusses camera technology with Brian, but is clearly attached to Mike. Yeah, because Mike's hot. I mean, Mike is hot. Because Brian's a fucking loser. Brian could be attractive. Like, he's got an emo boy thing that would could work for him. Him being attractive. But standing next to Him Mike. being attractive has very little to do with how he looks, though. It True. has everything to do with his horrible personality. Yeah, it's his entire <laughs> his fucking entitled his bullshit. Entire, tit- his entire demeanor, and he's got very much like entitled white kid. Extreme incel energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Later, Brian is at the house. Kate and Mike are in the next room. Fuck, fucking. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> Once they're done, Kate comes out, awkwardly says hi to Brian, and goes to the kitchen. Yeah. Brian, Mike, and Kate then go back to the diner, and Brian and Kate talk cameras. And he's like, Mike doesn't even know cameras. And she's like, yeah, that's not it's not what I like about him. <sighs> <laughs> you like cameras? Fuck me. <laughs> I deserve it. I've earned it. This fucking piece of shit. Mike doesn't know anything about cameras, but Kate assures Brian that she's teaching her boyfriend about them. But he knows a lot about having a dick. Yeah, and Um, that's kind of the main thing I'm looking for right now. And also, Mike is very clearly, like... The better person. Kinder. Yes. Brian, right away, Brian is entitled and all this kind of shit, and Mike is like... I mean, this is... I'm being kind of shitty here, but, like, Mike clearly has a greater social equity than needing to spend time with Brian. Yes. He's cl- spending time with Brian because he likes him, because yeah. they're friends, or maybe because he feels bad, or whatever. It's but I think they're actually friends. Yes. But, like, M- Mike doesn't need Brian. No. Do you know what I no. mean? Like, no, 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 no. The friends film each other talking about what they plan to do in five years. I also hate this. Five I, years? I, well, no, sorry. I just mean, like, I hate the idea of, like, hey, we're all, like, film majors. Why don't we all just constantly have our cameras up filming each other we'll figure out what the movie is as we go i mean i'm it's sure. like why are you filming if you don't know what the movie is or they're just excited to have new technology and but just they're are... all doing it well, especially if you're like i mean i think the two of them were film majors maybe or one of them is and the other one just likes film i know but what i mean is the conceit of this whole thing yeah. is brian is like i gotta figure out what my film is gonna be well i don't think but that's they're the filming the whole this. time and he's like oh, i'll figure it out yeah, I, I I think that's fine. Yeah, that's so fucking wanky. Life is the film. Oh my god. Anyways, Kate wants to be an environmentalist, a lawyer, or both. Cool. <laughs> that's a real thing. No, I understand. Okay. Brian, what are are you in a mood today? No, I just mean it doesn't like. There's nothing else in this episode that, like, that never comes up again. Well, that's not really the point. But she comes over, she's got all this interesting camera, like really detailed interest, and she's like, oh yeah, but I don't intend to use any of that. I mean, that. I've got a lot of knowledge of that stuff that I don't ever use. I'm you not... definitely do. I know, I understand that. But what I mean is, if you if we're going to the trouble of saying a thing, surely it should come up again. Well, the, the point is, is that they're talking- In a TV it. show where we have to be economical about dialogue and what we're showing on screen, like surely everything should have some meaning. Well, I think that the idea that, that she's an environmentalist and a lawyer does play in later. Like, one, she cares enough about, like, the, the like, uh, to care about what's going on with their lives and to, like, to, like, what's wrong and right. And, like, that does come up. And, like, 
And the whole point they're having this conversation. She is does to, manage to find a loophole out of being bad. Yes, so, which but is also pretty lawyerly. Like they also t- the, the whole point of this conversation is to talk about that they have this like long future ahead of them. Yeah, right? I guess. <laughs> Are you alright today? I just don't like this episode. That's crazy. This Anyways. episode. This episode sucks. Huge shit. Wow, this might be the farthest we're ever from each other. Yeah, I I hate this episode. Brian wants to work in Hollywood, and Mike plans to set sail into the middle of the ocean and take things easy. Yeah, what does Brian say? He, it's a great He wants joke. to work. F- he wants to work for oh HBO HBO or Roger just, M- like like HBO just has a staff of camera people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not how those things work. Or what's his name, Roger or Michael Moore? Michael Moore. No, not yeah. Roger. Moore. I always make that, that would be very funny though. Yeah, Michael Moore. Yeah, or Michael Moore. I don't know, work for HBO. Or for another director. Or for Michael Moore. Yeah. I have no artistic voice of my... I mean, that is actually true. Yes. So, at least he knows that. Brian is filming a literature uh, lecture by Professor Lodonsky, Lodensky yeah. of, on Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Yeah, they're talking about Piggy. Yeah. Oh, Piggy. Did you ever read Lord of the Flies? Hell yeah, man. Nice. Did you? No. I mean, I thought that was required. They yeah. made us do it in school. I did what I want. Kate comes uh, in right. and confirms that Brian is taping for Mike, who has dosed off again. Yeah, yeah. Classic Mike. You beautiful hunk. You don't need school. Goddamn right he doesn't. Yeah. He'll, yeah. Oh, even he's like, I don't know. I'll end up on a. He's like, like I'm, yeah. His future plan is like, I don't know, yacht. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my lovely girlfriend will uh, be there, and he's like, that's a man who knows he's gonna fail upwards. He, he's got such confidence about it. Listen, I kind of respect it. Also, the fact that he could say my girlfriend's gonna uh, will be there. And he's like, and then he points to his current girlfriend. He's like, yeah. you can come too. Yeah, he's like, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> yes, that's a that's a that's a man who's a, both hot and is hanging dong. A, a confidence I could only dream of. Yeah, this makes me feel unconfident. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I look I look like a veritable Brian next to that kind of confidence. <laughs> Brian tells Michael that he filmed the lecture for him, and Michael says, "I wish I could quit you," which is a quote from Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, it's cute. I like that. As they leave, another student, Scott Parker, bumps into Brian, knocking his camera to the ground. He runs off, and the three friends follow. He- also, it's like college, and they bump into this guy, and he's like, get out of the way, dweebus. It's like, it's Truly, such like it high is, school bully kind of shit. It is very high school. It's very it's- funny. <laughs> the police are securing a nearby crime scene where a student, Jacob Carter, was brutally murdered. Yeah. Sam and Dean, posing as FBI agents, sh- suddenly show up at the scene. Here's this, I always love when they do these. Here's the thing I like in this episode. Like in the Ghost Faces yeah. one from seasons ago now, I love the being on the periphery yeah. and just kind of getting snippets of what we know is a normal episode. Like we they play off the idea that we know the structure of the show so well that we're like, "Oh, I know where we are." Yes. Like here and we just get little snippets of it. That really works for me yeah. even in this episode that i don't like i really love that shit totally i think it's great the detective in charge tells them that a neighbor woman reported uh reported growling noises and jacob's screams yeah back at their house the three friends discuss what they saw and figure that it's a good thing that the fbi is checking out the murder mike puts on a song that is pl- was playing at the diner when they first when they first met kate yeah uh, as a gift to her, which is like not a gift. That's I mean, that's like a Ross Geller kind of gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the same song. With or without you, <laughs> Brian asks him to uh, come with him to test out some new cameras. With and Mike agrees. Yeah, we're gonna go out real late at night to test these. Well, I don't I think, even think he sets up that like they have like a night vision thing or something. I, I don't know why they go out in the middle of the night. I mean, they do test. have night vision, but is that what they're testing? Maybe, but I don't think they go into detail about what it is. Well, but this, again, though, this is what I mean, just like from the filmmaking thing, like there's an economy of like, like everything needs to, we only have so much time and so many words to say and yeah. like so many things to show. So testing it covers a lot. I know, but <laughs> but all you have to say is like, these these shoot well at night, we should test it. And then you go, that's why they're out at night. Because otherwise you go like, why are you doing this now? Hmm. Shouldn't you be like, stopping your hot well, also, girlfriend or something? Like, why are you still out trying with to... this fucking loser at midnight? <laughs> well, I think also there's a potential where the guy just wants to get him away from her and... Totally. But it's just like... And, and he's still trying to figure out what the fuck he's making in his movie about. I guess, yeah. 
before he goes, uh, he privately tells Kate that he's going to uh, he's going because Brian doesn't have any other friends. I mean, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Brian and Mike film some footage of the stadium and spot Sam and Dean nearby. They listen in as Sam figures that it's n- a normal murder, but Dean believes that they need to dig deeper. Yeah, Dean's like, you're rusty, man. Uh, like, again, I, I do like just just being on the outside of a regular episode. I will say a thing that I, occurred to me in this episode that I think connects to me all the rest of this and the, maybe even a little bit of the last season is like, I don't think we ever lost soul as Sam fully. Like, the way Jared still, like, plays him, especially in this episode, I'm like, oh, he's not a sweet boy anymore. Like, he's vi- like he's definitely hardened in a way that, like, is almost like a jer- like a bully now. I I kind of know what you mean. There's an edge to Jared now that, like, see, to Sam. I don't feel it as an edge. I feel it more like a... An exhaustion of, like, I people. feel it like that, where he's just like... Okay, like there's bigger stuff we should be talking about. I don't want to be here. I've made that very clear. You it's, know what I mean? Like I, I, I see it as like, yeah, like he's tired, or it's like he just doesn't have empathy anymore. And maybe that's an intentional thing that he's playing because he's like, I need to show that I don't want to do this job anymore. Oh, see, I don't, I don't, I don't read that. I don't read it as him not caring. I just read it as him being too tired like even when he goes into like the, the i know what you mean though i know what you're talking he about. goes into the murder scene at the beginning of it and he's just like man there's a corpse like man i wonder who made all this blood like there's just a lack of empathy anymore yeah yeah maybe that's just a performance thing then yeah and i do wonder if it's something to do with either he's he's intending for this to be like that or i mean i know jensen definitely does this which is like over the seasons he definitely gets like more apathetic, more gruff. Yeah. Like he definitely each season he gets a little bit more despondent. I, I I wonder if it's just that it's it's not having the effect that Jared wants it to. Like mm. he wants to play either I'm exhausted with all of this or we should be looking for Kevin. Sure. But what's coming out instead is like none of this affects me. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so as night falls, Brian and Mike spot, uh, Scott and his girlfriend making out behind the bleachers, which again, a high school thing. Yeah. Let's go into the university bleachers. Yeah. Where it's like, well, I could just fuck you in a, your room. Like, yeah. Or in a, in the car I own yes, or in yeah. the, you know, Scott, uh, she slaps Scott and walks away. Or in the wood shop, like normal people. What? What? Anyway. <laughs> Fucking got definitely called it the wood shop. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and Scott spots Mike and Brian and chases after them. Hey, don't you look at me with a girl. <laughs> yeah. You you little dweebus. Yeah, Get don't be cheesing here. on me and my gal. I'm going to jam you in a locker. Yeah. <laughs> the friends split up and Mike records himself as he wanders in the woods. Something yeah. attacks him, dragging him off camera. Yeah. And a pretty good, you know, found footage. Yeah. Jump oh, scare kind of thing. Oh, I think it looks pretty good. I love that. Yeah. When Brian finds Mike a little later, he realizes that something has bitten his friend. Mike is somehow like fine. Yes. Yeah. But he has definitely been bitten like on the arm. Yeah. However, by the time he gets home, the bite or mark like is completely the healed. Or something. Yeah. It's the shoulder, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next day, Mike gets a checkup by the doctor, but can't find anything wrong with him. As he opens a door, Mike inadvertently rips it off its hinges. And they realize that he is now super strong. I think some of these effects look pretty good in this oh, yeah. episode. You know, like just these like lifting up the girlfriend and lifting up the girl, the stuff that's supposed to just look like it's happening yeah. in that moment. And yeah, because yeah. you know, and I think there's a slightly different technique to that to when you're filming a normal episode because it's like you you have this sort of well, it's not like a static camera because again, there's like in every one of these scenes. Brian's got like six cameras set up. We're doing a lot. Well, of now he's setting up a ton of cameras because they're like, we, we need to capture what's going on. Oh, I know that they're, I know that they're doing the legwork to be like, and this is why we have more angles, but it also feels like maybe if you were slightly more creative, you would have figured out this episode with fewer angles and you wouldn't need to do that. Sure. But, uh, but I do think some of these effects really work. Him pulling that door off looks great. Yeah. And, and yeah, him lifting her up, being like really strong, like that shit works for me. Some of the fight stuff later in the episode, I think, is pretty well done. Like, yeah, I think there's some good stuff, and there's some good like up close effects. We're not there yet, but like wounds healing in yeah. a shaky camera in a broken mirror, yeah. or like, like if 
there was a part of me that's like, I guess that actually may, maybe that makes it easier because yeah. there's more things obscuring it. And I was like, or maybe it makes it harder because yeah. there's more shit going on. And I don't know which it is, but there's the effects are pretty solid. Totally. Brian decides to place cameras throughout the house. When Kate notices, Brian explains that he wants to record the uh, Mike's origin story, story and make a film out of it. As Mike eats, Brian says that he wants to go out and get bitten so that they both can <laughs> they both can be superheroes. Yeah, which is also like Jesus, Brian. You can't like no one can have a thing. I, know. I have to have this thing. I mean, like, whatever. That's definitely a, a character motivation for him. Yeah, yeah. But it's also like I. It just be, you just feel like why do these people hang out? I mean, neither of them again need the I've social also, equity of Brian. You didn't have a guy like that in your like friend group. But isn't the dynamic usually like? But he's the one with the cool car. Not or always. He's the one with the pool in his backyard. So we, you know, sometimes like, it's just like maybe at one point he had something, and now yeah. it's like he's just still part of the group. Or yeah, fair he was enough. Friends with somebody, and so you just let him. Yeah, Join. he's definitely there by Mike's good graces. For there was sure. a guy that, uh, like that, that was like a friend of a friend uh, when I was like around this age. Okay, um, and I remember he w- he was this little guy, and and he had real little guy syndrome. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a cool thing to have. Yeah, and he was real fucking annoying about it. But this sure. whole, this whole thing was uh, th- then he was friends with this other guy, a real fucking Mike, uh, right. or which one's the shitty one, Brian. Brian, uh, Brian, yeah, he was a real Mike. This guy, yeah. he, sh- he he always showed up to parties with like foam swords. And oh, that's fun. He had like foam swords and like uh like rock'em sock'em like type like punching uh, Mike, gloves Mike, and stuff. Mike, yeah, Mike, this guy Mike, ruled. Mike. So anyway, so he shows up and th- uh, the Brian is like, oh, you should get out all the weapons and stuff. And uh, and he's like, yeah, sure, that's why I bring him to parties. Yeah, fine. Uh, and and then I had been sort of making fun of this little guy all all night. So he he's like he's like we should fight and I was like eh. I was like I'm a lot bigger than you man I don't I don't know if this is a yeah. good idea and he's like no we should do it so he gets a sword yeah. and I get the punching gloves <laughs> oh come on and so he comes running at me unexpected it's so much easier with the gloves he came up he can't he comes so fast running at me with the sword yeah. so I just sock him. And yeah. we're in a backyard, and he goes like eight feet back <laughs> and smashes into a garden and just like fully knocked out. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good night. Yeah, uh, yeah. God, just why is why do they have Brian? Mike refuses, saying that his uh, friend doesn't uh, that he he doesn't want what he has. Yeah. Uh, Brian begs him to do it, but Mike refuses. Later, Mike and Kate are using a bong. I do love like college bong uses where it's like uh, did you ever use a bong that big um yeah i don't think i i think i've maybe seen a bong that big once in my life well maybe not quite that big but yeah i definitely it's yeah. comically large i they do a good job with the i've definitely lived it in places like this it does yeah it does look like an old house like there's some nice stuff some used stuff i i agree actually the set is good like the chair looks like there's like a nice chair that somebody clearly had like got from ikea yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like fake nice yeah and then there's like clearly like something that's like somebody's grandma gave them or but... something that came with the house yeah or yeah, 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 yeah 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 they yeah. do a good job yeah uh, i agree yeah. I, I really like the set design it's pretty solid um sam and dean then arrive at the door yeah uh as they hide brian answers the door and the brothers ask him if they know anything about jacob's murder or rumors of someone being bitten Brian yeah. denies everything and they leave. What are the camera angles on this one? I don't even remember. How do they shoot this? Is it through the window? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it is. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank uh, you. I couldn't remember like what the thing was. Sure. I was like, did he go out onto the porch with a with the camera? Like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and right. Kate and Mike record the brothers out on the porch as they talk about dealing with another Mayan god. Uh, yeah, they're like, I don't. It's funny that they're like, we just did it last week. Is it again? Yeah, like you guys forget like what werewolves were are? they saying that or were they just saying like are they just talking about the Mayan god thing? Well, they were just saying like maybe we got another Mayan god. Like I, yeah, I don't know how serious they were. About yeah, it, but uh, they play the tape back and for Brian and they wonder if Mike is has become a Mayan deity because I think they yeah. just overhear that thing yes. and then they're like yeah, oh yeah, that yeah. must mean that I, that's what I am. 
That night, Kate dozes off and Mike goes into the bathroom and admires himself. However, as he films himself, he realizes that he's growing fangs and claws. Good transformation. Love it. It, looks, it all looks really good, yeah. He smashes the mirror and then goes to look at the sleeping Kate for a minute. After stroking her cheek, he goes to the kitchen and empties the refrigerator, but is still hungry. Yeah. Been there. Listen, <laughs> I haven't had anything to eat today. Yeah, I mean, did you eat? Did you see when he ate all that raw beef in the yeah, fridge? Yeah, listen, call me a rougarou. <laughs> a rougarou. A rougarou. <laughs> <Ruga-ruga-ru. laughs> Scott and his friends are out patrolling the neighborhood looking for the animal killer or the killer animal. Which uh, is like a cool thing to do if you're like a bully sophomore. Co- in college, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know how there's an ant? Let's go kill an animal tonight, boys. I mean, fucking dirtbags like that. I yeah. know, but like the idea that they're invested, in, like instead of like, oh, there's an animal out there. It's like, well, it doesn't matter. We'll be at a party doing what it. Like, like, I love the idea. It's like, no, we're going to waste a night hunting a like fox or whatever. Well, they the want to be seen as like is. heroes or something. I guess. Right? Yeah. Uh, Scott films himself and spots Mike, who says that he isn't in the mood for Scott's antics. Yeah. Mike runs off into the woods and Scott chases after him, calling him a coward and saying that he'll go after Kate if Mike won't turn around and fight him. I will say. Um, like, a, like a, such an overt like threat of violence. But also. Like. A big thing that I, I always sort of lived by in, especially when I had like high school bullies, was like, alone they'll never do anything. Yeah. The whole point is that they're trying to like show off for other people. R- sure, right. Like yes. th- that was my whole thing. Where it's like, if you have a bully, confront them in person because typically they they won't do anything. They only ever try to like posture for other people. Sure, right, right, right. That was always a thing I lived by. The idea that like one person sees another person and then goes after them, it's like pretty unlikely. Yeah. No, I I know what you mean. As Scott tries to spot him, Mike transforms and attacks him. Yeah. The next morning. That's good, yeah. Yeah. The next morning, Brian wonders if Kate is scared of Michael, but she says that uh, his being a superhero is kind of hot. Yes. 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 Oh, you mean he can, like, tear me up? Yeah. Easy. (laughs) Tearing up my heart when I'm with you. I'm a fucking werewolf, isn't that cool? cool. <laughs> it don't matter what. <laughs> you did the, you, he did the dance dancing, moves, yeah. yeah. Have you been seeing all of the, like, uh, NSYNC stuff? Plus, I, I've i been seeing a lot of, the, uh, there's some, there's an act called Joey Fatone and Friends, where it's just Joey and whoever he can get, and they all just go on stage and unrehearsed sing each other's songs the fat one in friends yeah that's amazing he had fucking nick carter he had uh the guy that sings despacito wow he had sean stockman from boys to men wow yeah. i love that yeah it's, it's dece mike comes in covered in blood and his friends stare at him in horror yeah it's good you know like all down the mouth and everything it's like he can't be like it's not what it looks like yeah, like it's pretty yeah. like you know? i I ate somebody out on their period. <laughs> yeah, th- that's what I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did not eat Scott's heart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> eat your heart out. So Scott. if you ever think that's what I did, you're incorrect. I didn't. Nope. Yeah. You know that because I'm saying that right. <laughs> and now. I'm emphatic. Yeah. He takes a shower and washes off the blood, and then tells him uh, them that he's killed Scott. Oh, fucking yeah. Did not did not live live that lie very long. <laughs> They they go over the footage and that that Mike filmed in the Scotty bathroom. Scotty doesn't know that his organs in me. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, that's good. Uh, and see his claws. And Kate tells Brian to turn off the camera. Yeah. Brian goes to the park where Scott was killed and watches while Sam and Dean talk to the local detective. Yeah, and something in, I can't, I don't can't remember the exact exchange, but this. This local detective is like, you think I'm a fucking idiot? This is an animal, you stupid goddamn FBI. I ruined my case. <laughs> He's like getting like really agitated yes. with them. He tells the brothers that the same thing that killed Scott as Jacob and uh, that it left Scott's partially eaten heart in the street. Yeah. Michael goes back and tells his friends what happened, but Mike doesn't remember eating the heart. Kate insists that it was self-defense. But Brian points out how <laughs> unlikely that is and snaps at Mike. Also, for someone who wants to be a lawyer, self-defense doesn't work if you have like a grossly disproportionate <laughs> amount of like power and force. Sure, yeah. You know? 
if someone comes at you to push you and you it, shoot them with a gun and you yeah <laughs> launch them into orbit it's yeah. not self it's not to, yeah, you know, no, like, no. although uh, in the states i mean who knows uh Mike shoves him across the room with one hand and then breaks down. When he says that he doesn't know who he is anymore, Kate says that he's hers. Fucking and lucky guy. Brian insists that they have to call the police and that Mike. What a wild few weeks for her. I mean, truly. Yeah. Anyway, Mike. Uh, that Mike is risking himself and them. Kate angrily tells them that he doesn't understand because he's never been in love, and sets out to get some answers. Yeah. She's like, I have been in love yeah. with. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> With Mike. <laughs> no one could love you, Brian. Mike and Kate <laughs> follow Sam and Dean to the morgue and listen to as uh, Sam tells Dean that 10 years ago there was a similar murder. How, however, it didn't take place during the full moon. Yeah. No one was doing their diet at the time. Yeah. This is the bit that, wow. This is the bit this episode like barely does. They just go like, oh, some werewolves don't need that. Anyway, it's like called like a true. Yeah, they say something, but like if you're like, if you're like four generations, it's so like everything's so fucking arbitrary. Sure. Once they leave, Kate wants to follow, but Mike doesn't see the point. Right. Brian arrives, having tracked his friend's cell phone GPS. They wonder if he can hack anything. That's like a cool thing for a friend to do. Yeah. Yeah. And he assures them that he can hack anything. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> You're in my world now. Damn. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, much better. <laughs> it's Mike eating the heart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they follow the Winchesters to the to a diner, and Brian hacks the security camera somehow. Sure. Mike goes in with a hidden camera and sits at the table next to the brothers. Dean does say clear eyes, clogged arteries can't lose. <laughs> yeah, because Dean orders two burgers, yeah. I think, in this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, which is a, f- uh, a slogan from Friday Night Lights. Yeah, yeah. Clear eyes, full heart can't lose. Oh, I was just, yeah, no, you're right. I always had, I always fuck it up. Full eyes, clear hearts. Hit, nope. Football. <laughs> <laughs> full eyes, clear hearts, football. <laughs> I want to make that bumper sticker. <laughs> Full eyes, clear heart, <laughs> heart football. football. <laughs> <laughs> the three friends watch <laughs> and listen as Sam finds an entry about how close descendants of the pure blood can. Oh yeah, it's a pure blood vampire can control their change. Where, and, uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, is it close descendants or distant ones? Uh, like close it, descendants, I think. But what? Oh, I still don't really understand what it. What? What do they mean? Pure blood? Like, because they're not talking alpha things, are they? No, maybe it's just like, like what is the? I I just I don't, I don't understand know. like what they even are setting up as the distinction. You know what I mean? Except for the only the only I, I don't know how you get to be a a, a pure blood, but it means that you can change uh, uh, on your own choice yeah sure so uh and uh yeah and subsist on animal hearts alone right um which is a weird thing i was thinking about watching this i was like if your human self is full like do you does your werewolf need to eat it's one body i mean i love where your head's at (laughs) but also the idea that like or is it now like that at all times? Like I don't want to have like a burger. Why would you cook meat? Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've just, I've just fucking seen it. <laughs> um, but I do wonder, like, is there something that could be in that, like, that the heart has that potentially like no other part of the body has that 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 could be the reason why they have to eat the heart specifically well yeah i I could see you trying to tee up doctor letters right now i (laughs) hey look um i don't know look we're we're kind of like the hunters and we like call upon experts yeah bobby hit us up yeah um i think i think it's meant to be more magic sure than that there's like a chemical that wolves fucking love that's in the heart. But like what is You know what I mean? But yeah, like what does it do? Like what yeah. it what it do? Well, I think, you know, like it's just that idea of like we, we were talking about like 
even last week with the mind sacrifice thing, like the heart is like sure in a lot of traditions that is like the soul kind of like, sure, yeah. or you know your gut was your soul like different like that idea that like this is where you are yeah. kind of idea like so if you're consuming like if you're taking that life into you like eating that makes more sense than eating like their hand sure like something kind of you know yeah uh the three friends watch and listen as Sam finds an entry about how close descendants of purebred can control their change and subsist on animal hearts. The brothers figure that... What a cool new thing to learn about werewolves after <laughs> hunting for this long. The brothers figure that one of the pure werewolves came to town, killed its victim, and then decided to stay. The three friends returned to the, the house and Mike starts to panic, figuring the FBI is after them. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, yeah. And, uh, Kate doesn't believe that the Winchesters could be well, FBI. Well, she's like, yeah, she's like, they're not FBI. They don't, no, no FBI says uh, awesome that awesome much. Awesome that much, which, which is a great is line. Pretty funny. And uh, yeah, I mean, it also always goes back to the car. Like, I mean, they're cool as shit. Yeah. Mike I love that they were willing to believe it was the FBI up to and including them investig investigating werewolves. And but they're like, gods, yeah. But they're like, but they say awesome too much. Yeah. I don't think these guys are legit FBI. Yeah, that crosses the I think line. the actual FBI monster hunters would be a lot more professional. Absolutely. Yeah. Mike doesn't believe it and goes to the bedroom with Kate. They argue while Brian goes over the footage of the original attack on Mike. Yeah, and Brian sees something in the footage. That's right. And calls to Kate, but she slams the door shut, which I don't think is called for. No, I think it is. Get the fuck out of here, Brian. But it's not like he, he's just like, hey, guys, I think I found something. And then she's like, fucking shut the fuck up. Yeah, you piece of shit. <laughs> Brian has no choice but to go out on You've his own. You've never known love. And it, it, you <laughs> never could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and examine the attack site. I would die before I loved you. Yeah. <laughs> he finds a pin on the ground and realizes that it's the same one that Ladunsky was wearing at his lack last lecture yeah because when we were in the lecture <coughs> like <coughs> way earlier yeah <coughs> there's this insane arbitrary zoom in on on yes. his vest you're like, like okay, what is that guess we'll clock that for later brian goes to uh, uh to ladunsky's office and tells him that he knows what the professor really is yeah later brian there's also he's also somehow gotten in there in advance and set up hidden cameras yes because that's why there's more angles again. Yes. It's because we can't trust ourselves to do actual found footage. We'd be like, can we at least get some different coverage? So this guy is now like a master hacker. He owns 40 cameras. Well, I, and I, he I, breaks into anything he wants and sets them up and wires them to his computer. And everything's like, like it, this is all still plausible, right? <laughs> right? I think it's fine. It's not. It sucks. <laughs> Brian goes to Lenensky's office. Yeah. And then later, Brian comes home and finds Kate packing. As Mike comes out, Brian says that he took care of things and they ask what he did. Yeah. He shows them the footage of his confronting Lenensky and asking the professor to bite him as well. Yeah. And he's got like silver and he's. He also does a Lord of the Flies reference. He's like, he's like, I'm tired of being piggy. I want to be Ralph. Ugh. Somebody crush this kid with a rock. <laughs> nice. Yeah, hell yeah. He warns the... I, I know it, but I know it because of the Simpsons. <laughs> I mean, fair. Yeah. Uh, he warns the professor that he hid cameras in his office in advance and is transmitting video to his laptop at home. That's like a cool thing everyone could do. Well, it's also... In 2009 or whatever I the think fuck it's this fine, is. but also it gives the ability for it to be like, you can't just kill me because like... I know narratively why they've done it. Also, but, but they set I it just... up that the guy is like uh, somehow a, a hacker. So... I, uh, but this is what I mean. If you keep having to say somehow that it's not done well, it's just done. And that's not the same thing. I mean, I can say the same thing about like Fast and the Furious movies, though. <laughs> You've never known love. <laughs> or family. <laughs> Let's keep denies being a werewolf until... <laughs> it's just, it's I fun. fucking can't with you. <laughs> I'll have any beer except for Corona. 
<laughs> you come into my house. Yes. Yeah. No, you're in my house. Oh shit. Fuck. I mean, technically, it's my landlord's house. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm dealing with it. I mean, listen. It's the 21st century. Everyone's got a landlord somewhere. I didn't. I was the landlord. Oh well, then. Um, I will be again. Don't worry. I'll be a slumlord. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm gonna own so many properties that I don't manage. No. Yeah. Could not care less. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Ladonsky denies being a werewolf until Brian threatens him with a silver letter opener, and then he breaks down and explains that after the one murder 10 years ago, he only ate animal hearts. Yeah. However, he saw Jacob weak and alone and couldn't resist. Well, because there's that thing that we've talked about. I think we talked about it the last time we saw a werewolf. Yeah. The, the werewolf that Sam banged, which is like, once you do that. Bang a werewolf. <laughs> what, yeah once you go werewolf you can you never, never go, go back back wolf back wolf yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i like to call it bear wolf <laughs> jesus um <laughs> once you've eaten animal heart it's really hard i mean once you've eaten human yes, heart sorry <laughs> then, then it's hard to turn that off right? right like that idea of like your transformation is complete so the the fact that this guy had the willpower to for 10 years not yeah, yeah. do it it's like you know like one little guy died like we can let this guy go Wow, you're fully just on that other guy's train now. Yeah, do you know what? I think, I think we should just let we should let monsters kill some people. Mike, 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 Mike. Mike. <laughs> um, Ladunsky <laughs> figured that hunters would eventually uh, would come eventually, so he needed a patsy. He chose Mike since he always he's always sleeping in, yeah. and the professor figured that no one would miss him. He, yeah, I. Uh, this is a weird turn for the professor, whose character is pretty... Like, innocent. Pretty and... innocent, and then he just goes like, him, who falls asleep in my class, he deserves to die. And it's like, oh, you're a real Mike, aren't you? You're it's, real Brian, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, it's like, oh, man. Yeah, he he is. He reveals himself to be quite the Brian. Yeah. <laughs> if I might, yeah. Brian says that he wants to become a werewolf and forces the professor to bite him. No, I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> I love, like, the modulated I voice. I do like thing. the way that they do it. They block it so that, like, you can hear the... That shit works great. Yeah, like, yeah. that's clever. I like that. You know? As the footage ends, Brian starts to transform and shows him footage of the office after he left. Yeah. Sam and Dean come in and attack Ladensky, eventually killing him. And then find the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I do like that the professor thanks them as he's done. Yeah, that's good. I liked that. Uh, He tells Kate that, uh, that he protected her when Mike couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I could bring back gender roles. (laughs) That's basically Brian's argument. <laughs> yeah. There are three bathrooms. Yeah. Man, woman, and werewolf. Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are... Listen, you just got to go to the tree you're meant to piss yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. It's for... I'm a werewolf. He wolves and she wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But my figures of Winchester will trace the feed back to Brian. Brian, angry and disgusted, tells... I'm surprised Brian didn't go, they'll never trace it back to me. I routed it through a satellite. Bang, 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 bang. I actually hacked the massage, so they'll never find it. Because I'm Brian and I know computers. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> angry and disgusted, tells Mike that he's tired of living in his shadow. Yeah. And that he finally want, uh He has what he wants. Yeah. Mike tries to persuade his friend, and he doesn't want the horror inside of him. The horror that he experienced when he went out of control and killed Scott. And this is where Mike reveals that he actually does remember eating the heart. Because but yeah. earlier he was like, I, I don't know yeah, what happened. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, I remember fucking It was the everything. most delicious thing I've ever it eaten. It was... Kudos to the person playing Mike. Yeah. Because I think he is doing a good job in this moment. Yeah. But the the way he's talking, like the lines are the most insane. Sure. No one talks that way. The thing I remember most, the sweet deliciousness of the, like, it's like, come on, just say, it tasted good. Or like, you know, like, ugh. <laughs> didn't even, I didn't even. Form and content have to match. You could have, like, more elevated dialogue, in, I would say, in a regular episode of Supernatural. But this is supposed to be found footage. It's supposed to be the way people talk. Brian tells Kate that she needs him and grabs her, and Mike transforms and attacks him. Yeah. they. It's a pretty good fight, sort of throwing through, like, walls and shit and, like, displays of strength and stuff like that. The, the 
my problem with it is I, I think I missed both the action and the sound of the stab at the end. Oh, I saw it. It I is kind of dark, it. but I saw it. And I think because it's the camera thing, like, yeah. it's just a little unclear. But I, I will say this, and this moment up and, and to the very end, this is where I turned on Kate. Because sure. Kate's acting gets so bad. Yes. And to the point where I, I, I then started in hindsight being like, oh no, she was bad from the beginning. Yes. Uh, Kate goes. One to, of me. No, no, no. One no, of me. Not at all. Not Mike, at all. Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we both love Mike. <laughs> Kate goes to her lover who says that with his dying breath that he loves her. Yeah. Which is like, it's been like a week. I mean, I know. Sure. But college romances too. I know, but still, Jesus. I mean, I've been there. I know, but you're also that guy. A bleeding heart. Yeah. <laughs> Kate tries to stab Brian, who easily grabs her and says that she'll understand, and then bites her. She locks herself this in the- This bite looks, he, it looks like he's trying to motorboat her. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's like, <laughs> like into her shoulder. She locks herself it's really bad. in the bathroom and films herself using the camera and then goes berserk. This is where there's a couple of those really good shots where you see like the wound close yeah, up, and yeah. it's like through yeah. the reflection in the broken mirror. Like it's, the effects are good. Yeah, like that looks really good. But yeah, she's kind of our like, boy's great. Yeah, sorry, it's because our boy is great. Yeah, is is, is, is he on yeah, like yeah. a whole show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kate finally gets control of herself and calls to Brian, saying that she understands now. Yeah, I love that she's like, I hate you, I hate this. She's like. Brian, I'm not <laughs> gonna kill you, and he goes boing. I mean, also, like, I mean, I get he's it. dumb enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't totally hate it, but it is ludicrous. Yeah, but yeah. also believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes outside and tells Brian that she understands, and then rips his throat out. Yeah, I like this where the camera just points at something else, and we just hear a scream and get a big explosion, a big blood splatter, <laughs> spatter. Fuck, I did the wrong one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I overcorrected. <laughs> it seemed like you were doing it to be a dick. Splatter. <laughs> yeah, spatter. Afterward, she covers Mike's corpse in, with a sheet and then sits down at the computer and records her messages, message to the Winchesters. She tells... Oh, that... she doesn't just record her message to the Winchesters. She edits oh, yeah. hundreds of hours yeah, of yeah, footage yeah. into the thing we just watched. Yes. <laughs> yes. She tells that she and her friends weren't monsters and didn't want what happened to them. Yeah. Kate then says that she's leaving and that she will eat animal hearts and never hurt anyone and promises that they won't. Yeah, I've never hurt anyone. Her. No one human anyway. Yeah. Maybe I can still be a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Sam's like, she is pre-law. <laughs> That's pre-law. And pre-strip. That's pre-law. <laughs> <laughs> before signing off Kate asks the Winchesters to give her a chance ask Sam and Dean look at the computer and wonder what to do next Sam hesitantly suggests that they leave they let her leave I think Dean says it first well no because Sam goes like eh, it's about she's got about like a half a day on us and then they don't say anything and then he goes I mean unless we should let her leave oh for some reason in my head Dean got there first, no, and I was a little. And surprised. then, much to his surprise, Dean agrees. Saying, but Dean does agree, and then the, the voice in my head was like, "Well, too, yeah, too little, too late for Amy." But <laughs> fucking... yeah, I think what he's thinking about is his boy. What the his vampire? Oh, buddy. yes, no, <laughs> totally. Uh, they can always. But I was thinking of Amy. Yes. I was like, Sam's just like, "Oh, okay, that's that's cool. That's not um... this time. It's fine, huh? Huh." <sighs> Yeah, uh, couldn't have done it to the one I felt this fucked. way like a yeah. year and a half ago. Or... Yeah, huh. they can always kill her if she fails to keep her promise. Which is like, if she kills one person, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, they collect all of the evidence that werewolves were there and leave. Outside yeah. of town, Kate hitches a ride to the border and then walks away along the railroad tracks. I will say that I I, I forgot that it was found footage ish. Until the end, where they 
Because then all of the show credits are there. Well, no, because they br- no no because they they come out of the the shot and Sam and Dean have been watching it the whole time. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh my god, this is so much better looking. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, holy shit! I'm like, this show is incredible looking. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, where's their Emmy? Yeah, yeah. I I also even love the last shot of her walking along the railroad. It's decent. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a really pretty shot. Um, and that's the end of the episode. And we'll discuss our reviews after this quick break. <gasps> And we're back to talk about our review. Please don't do that again. Yeah. I, I don't you can, like. You can breathe. I don't like the middle space. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> you could breathe the whole time. I don't know why you were holding your breath. Well, I didn't want anyone to hear me during the ad. I just cut it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Also, I'm not sure if there'll be an ad yet. I mean, there may be eventually. So I held my breath for nothing? Well, not no, nothing. It'll eventually be an ad. But <gasps> this week, there won't. <laughs> That's it. Until you cut it out, I'm the holding yeah, my breath. Yeah, yeah. I'm Brian. Yeah. I mean, truly. Well, tell me, what did you think about this episode? This episode is a big old piece of shit. I don't like this episode. I <laughs> like the idea of this episode. And then the more... You get into it, the more I find things that no longer work. Like, I love the idea of a found footage thing. Like, I fucking love that Ghost Facers episode. You yeah. know, I mean, that's not found footage, but you know what I mean. Like, I love the idea of, like, this other perspective or being on the periphery of a regular adventure. Like, I like that. My problem with this episode is they clearly immediately have no faith in their own premise. And they're like, we need a conceit whereby we can have eight angles in every room. And they're like, what if Brian was made of cameras? And then they just go and like, what if he breaks into every room? What if he's constantly around? He's hacking fucking CCTV. He's like, like all these things that like. There's no justification for other than we, we really just can't have one shot for this scene. And they're like, instead of being creative, they're just like, eh, I don't know, you broke it and put it in camera in there. Like, <laughs> like there's no, there's no like art, there's no like art to it. It's sure. very like arbitrary. The same thing kind of applies to like how we're treating werewolf lore, which is like, it's totally fine to just be like, hey, werewolves don't always need the moon. Yeah. Totally fine. Like, and reasonable to throw that out there later, but the like, pure blood like what does that mean almost all werewolves are turned from someone else you mean like a pure blood is like what two werewolves make a werewolf like what is yeah. what are we talking about yeah and because we're on the outside of the adventure this is a bad time to bring in new lore because sure. we don't know you know yeah. like and you don't have time to explain it yeah there's no time and it's the wrong circumstance for it right. and um like the kate uh i think she glides under the radar and then to your point when when it becomes the Kate show, it's real bad. Yeah, you know, and, and she's she's trying. And I don't even want to say like she is a bad actor, but she, her performance does it doesn't work no. in this episode at all. Um, and yeah, yeah, and then like to add to the problem with the conceit thing, again, let's remember we're in the periphery of a regular Winchester adventure. Sure. So even if we don't say it's week to week, there's no way they're on a job more than like two weeks usually. Yeah. Not for a regular kind of job. Sure. So let's say on the max, we have two weeks for this whole thing to take place. So we go from meeting Kate, maybe give that a week or so. And then from the first body to the end of the thing where the boys are there and they're cleaning up. It's like, we call it call it two weeks. And somehow in that time, we've recorded all this footage. Is he like halfway through? He still didn't know what the movie was, but somehow the earlier stuff is edited or she killed him. And then within like two days, because there's no way the boys were that far behind. She combed through hundreds of hours of footage from, again, like 14 cameras and edited stuff together. And she was like, this is like instead of just recording herself going a lot of bad shit happened. Check the footage, blah, 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 blah. We, we now have, like, I've edited this, this like, film for you. What do you think? I put my own voice over, over. Here's a shot of me from the beginning again. And there's, like, so she spent all that time instead of just running or, like, doing something else. It just, it's just all so contrived. It's so arbitrary. 
I just have a real problem with the they had like the conceit for the episode and then at every step along the way they don't trust the conceit and they undermine it and it just ends up cheapening the whole thing and you go well then why did we do this I, I just think this episode doesn't work fundamentally okay I'd give this uh, I'd give this like 1.5 Brian I'm sure do you think this is as bad as bugs yeah actually yeah I love this episode that's insane this is uh, an episode, uh, one of my favorite episodes. That's fucking crazy. This episode is so bad. It's There are a lot of flaws with this episode, uh, but it's so fun. I love the premise so much. Uh, I love the like the sort of like secular nature of it with them like finding it at the beginning and then like the, her recording that at the end. I, I mean, I can wash away a lot of the confusing parts. It doesn't really bother me that much. I think the 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 her at the 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 I, I'm assuming that she's just attaching her clip to the what was the movie that was already being made because the whole movie was about him becoming a werewolf. So he was probably already cutting all of that footage together. I know, but but like but again, hundreds of hours of yeah, but it was already he's being live made. At, he's like doing dailies. He's fucking probably he's probably cutting it as he's making it. I this this whole thing it just it, it it the conceit completely falls apart. It doesn't bother me at all. I think it totally works. Oh, uh, she's a terrible actress, a hundred percent. Um, I think that uh, I love Mike and Brian. Like they do such a great job playing those, and I love that. The I fact, think Mike is very good. I think I, they do a really good job of like balancing those two characters and making the like like guy who you would be easier to hate which is like the cooler more attractive guy right they don't play it that way which also goes always into the show hates dorks uh right. but also loves them true but they, they're willing to like shine a light on the shitty parts of like of like geek people sure which i really like and sort of like uh also being like uh that the concept of the uh like incel dude thing like they're really shining a light on that mentality of being totally like, you're not owed anything just because you try hard doesn't mean like you, you you have any worth the one thing this episode gets right is that brian is an unadulterated villain yeah he's not even really sympathetic no no that's the one thing this episode gets right which and, and it just like it felt like a lot of the acting felt like a lot of friendships and stuff that i had back like in, like around that time like the the like weird but even like in her poor performance, there is some realism to that because I think that like I've definitely met people who like try in a weird way or put on some sort of like 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 right. they're trying to do a thing, especially during that college years. Sure, you're just like, is this a version of me? Am that, I, like, you're affecting like personality. Yeah, 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 that kind of stuff, and being like, uh, it, everything is a performance, right? And so I'm not like that. That part didn't really bother me. The only part that really kind of bothered me was when, like, her reaction when they were fighting. It's very like, oh, <laughs> like it's well, like, yes, yeah. It's it, she definitely wasn't great at action and stuff, but it's fine. Um, it, it was a fun episode, and I, you, I, I, I like it. I want to be time. clear: you're allowed to like it. It's totally fine to like it. But I do want to point out that if your reaction to things is just like, eh, I don't know, it's fine. It means like you like it, but like let's admit it's not good. It's got some dumbness to it, and I think that having a little bit of dumb inside a piece of media makes it good. I know what you're trying to do here, but that's not quite what my argument <laughs> is with things. Uh, I I don't mind that it's a little bad. I mean that's fine, but so surprising, wild that you feel that way about this episode. I'm gonna give it a uh, four point two five. Uh, that's half eaten hearts. Outrageous. That's how I feel about it. 4.25. Yeah. This is your favorite episode so far this season. Yeah. That is outrageous. Yeah. I love it. It's a great episode. We may never recover from this. <laughs> I'm curious to know what the audience, because I, I have a feeling that also other people feel this way because looking at the reviews. I'm sure people like this, but I like. But no, I no, think, no, but I think the reviews are also I think sometimes torn. these, like, the novelty format episodes get, like, just an immediate bump just for doing something different, not necessarily because they did it properly or well. But I don't think that's true because there's so many of these types of episodes you, that, that you can't really do that anymore. Like, uh, and also looking at the actual reviews, like, there is, it is very split. 
Oh, is it? Well, so maybe this is a real polarizing episode. So the, uh, on IMDb, uh, the one out I of- I can't believe it's 7.1 out of 10. Yeah, but w- w- the reviews like on a one is 11.5%. And twenty five point seven for ten. So it's like either you loved it or hate it. Sure. And so think, well, okay. Well, then it's pretty polarizing. Yeah, yeah. I think it absolutely. Yeah, I, is. Ca- I can't believe some of these like ten star reviews. All right, all right. All right. Just oh my god. Settle down. Block, 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 <laughs> block. Uh, all right. Those were our reviews. But before we go, we have a note from a fellow hunter. Whoa. <gasps> no, 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 no. You don't need to. Oh, That's sorry. Not a, okay. Right. This isn't a break. This is oh, we're just god. going into it. So we're not on a break. Uh, we were never on a break. Oh, yeah. That's uh oh. I need to make a call. <laughs> um. So, we've got two this week. Oh, okay. This, this first one begins. We've Hello. got so many. We could do two in an episode. And we can. We've. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah Hell yeah. Uh, this first one begins. Uh, Hello, guys. I'm currently on the first season review of Faith. <laughs> I was positive you were going to say, hello, guys, I'm currently waiting for a transplant. I was in a horrible <laughs> car accident. It's funny you bring I'm up- worried about ghosts. It's funny you bring up transplants, <laughs> oh, but we'll no. go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, not for this one, don't oh, worry. Okay. Uh, I'm enjoying listening to your podcast. My birthday is the same as Sam's, May 2nd, 2003. Oh, shit. Uh, if I am allowed, I am going to tell you about... Uh, two supernatural experiences I had. Ooh, okay, sure. One time, I woke up and saw an angel. Sadly, not Cass. Yeah, I mean, hello. <laughs> I'm looking for Dean. Is he here? Is he in your sheets? Anyway, uh, <laughs> see ya. But still c- cool regardless. Another time, I stayed up late and heard someone say my name. I don't like that. No, nope, I don't like that at all. I looked at my sister's- I don't care if it's real or not. That's yeah. a fucking terrifying thing to hear. There's a thing that I know is fake all the time, but I see it on TikTok where it's like, uh, it's like, hey, like Brian, it's your mother. And it's like outside of the, your door. <sighs> and people are like, my mother's not alive anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, or like, nope. That's not my mom. I hate that. I looked at my sisters and I knew it couldn't be them because they were asleep. Oh, no. Their voices didn't sound the the same way that this voice did. I haven't had any supernatural experiences other than those two. Those make up for no no more. (laughs) Yeah. Do you know the thing that still freaks me out? Even though, you know know me, I don't really believe in most monster stuff. Yep. The thing that freaks me out is like fake human voice like you know when we were covering like oh yeah to go or like stuff like that like help oh yeah help me like yeah like as something mimicking a human like that freaks me you out. ever seen it when like birds <laughs> and stuff do it yeah i don't ugh, i don't like it thanks for making this podcast you guys makes me make me laugh thanks for reading my email cassandra wow thanks for writing in <clears throat> that's scary as shit yeah that's fucked up i don't like it even the angel <laughs> Angel of Harlem. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck it. Of all the songs with the word "angel" in it, we went to U two. Yep. Second email. Okay. Uh, eye transplants. Oh my god, we're settling it. Hi, I'm an amateur ophthalmologist. Is he? <laughs> is he from Utah? Okay. Who emailed uh, us yep. last week? That's right. Uh, I hate to double email when you posed a question about eyes I had to answer because I work for an entomologist. Whoa. <laughs> Wait, an entomologist? Yeah. Like a person that studies ants? Like not an entomologist. An ent- no, ent. Like entomology. Isn't that insect? Isn't that the study of insects? Uh, an entomologist. Etymology is words. Entomologist is people. Yeah. People who study insects is a yeah. career. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, well, then I'm waiting for these dots to connect. <laughs> I asked the doctor about eye transplant. I guess he's just a doctor. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Insect eyes, people eyes, they're basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the, the doctor about how <laughs> eye transplants, and he said that on a full eye, trans, eye transplant is actually not possible. Okay. Because there are just too many nerves. This is what we thought we said about the brain, yeah. but we weren't certain about the eye thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. But people can get a corneal transplant instead. Oh, shit. Just the front part of the eye. This can be done if someone has an illness or an injury that affects the eye. Oh, fuck. It won't give... Here's what's crazy. It won't give the person perfect vision, but it may help them with, like, driver's license tests. What the fuck? Holy shit. 
I also, I joined Patreon. Whoa, thank you. Excited to get to talk to you and all the other people that uh, that like this show. Keep up the good work and medical questions. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, we love we love calling upon our experts of the field. Yeah, my God. Yeah, I know an entomologist. Yeah. Or a person that works with one. Yeah, so yeah. if you have questions about eyes, yeah. <laughs> this bug person. Like a guy cutting open a grasshopper. She's like, hey, Doc, how do I, uh, how do I <laughs> transplants work? He goes, I don't know if it's anything like this fucking thing. You can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, you know what really bugs me? <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you want to continue this discussion and be like Izzy and get on our Patreon. Oh, I see. That was the cute. Yeah, that that go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash ghostfacers. Uh, For only $1 a month, you get access to Angel Radio, our awesome community Discord server. You can talk to us, talk to each other, meet new people, learn about grasshoppers or that's some right. shit. And the, or eyes, same tomato, and, potato. Uh, you, listen, you say grasshopper, and I, I say, say human eye eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go the whole thing up. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, it helps us support us. Also, if you want to be like Izzy again, you can send us an email to ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com or reach out to us through our various social media platforms. Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to us every single week. And while you're on there, give us a five-star review and then we will read it on a future episode like we did today. That's right. Also, if you want your full eyes, clear heart, football <laughs> bumper sticker. <laughs> full eyes, clear heart. Football. You can buy that on our merch store, ghostfacerspodcaststore.com. I mean, we'd make a killing on that bumper <laughs> sticker. Are you I mean, telling me that wouldn't work? Yeah, that and the uh, my daughter's pre-strip. <laughs> my daughter is pre-strip. I'm not going to run to the park this week. Oh, man. Uh, also, if you like what we do here, you might like what we do on our 400-episode podcast other podcasts yeah baby the dr dc podcast we talk about dc comics we answer listener questions about comic books and this week 400 episodes two days from now uh no like on the same day because this is one day late oh this yeah, week, yeah yeah and that one comes yeah. out yeah they both come out tomorrow yeah yeah Okay. Yeah. So 400 I'm episodes. I'm going to be up for a while tonight. And this is basically how it goes over there, too. <laughs> if anything, less organized. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> certainly more off the cuff. Listen to Who Arted. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Watch. Yeah, there's a Patreon over there, too, that helps to, helps to support us. So make sure you check that out. That is it for this week. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk. podcast.